Hi, I'm Scott Day. I own and produce Tomato Mania. Each year when we come to Rogers, we hear a lot about people growing on the coast and we hear, unfortunately, we hear that there are some challenges involved. And, well, we want to talk about that this morning and give you a few hints that will help you if, in fact, you're growing in an area that gets lots of coastal influence or if you're right on the water anywhere in Southern California. Here's the deal. Tomatoes are really willing little plants. You plant them and they'll generally, they'll generally grow very energetically through the season. But they want heat. And that's the biggest challenge in some coastal communities and in coastal gardens. What you want to do as you site your garden and as you grow your tomatoes is provide as much heat as you can to those growing plants. In most of the tomato growing world, six to eight hours of sun is plenty to get a good harvest. However, if you're coastal and if you're, if you're summer, if your temps are more uh, temperate as the season goes along, you want to push that and make sure that you get eight to ten hours of sun for your tomatoes the entire season. That's the way you're going to do the best. Siting your tomato garden is really important too. Heat is often generated in different ways than just finding a sunny spot that, uh, that will sort of take care of your plants all day long. Do you have a sunny west facing wall or south facing wall? Those are really good tools to use in growing tomatoes. Plant in front of those. You can increase heat also by planting behind the house, behind the fence, behind the hedge that blocks those coastal breezes that are inevitably cooling. You know how you go to the beach early maybe in the season and it's a little cool, but you put up a windbreak and then it's fine and nice and warm? Well, that's what you need to do for your tomatoes. Even a temporary screen around the tomato garden can help you out a lot because it raises temperatures. And in the end, that's going to be great for your tomatoes. As they grow or as you, again, you decide where to grow them, think about growing in pots. The soil in this container, and this is a pulp pot, which is another really great tool to use during the season. The soil in this container warms up more quickly and more completely than the soil in the ground. That's an advantage for you if you're growing at the coast. So if you haven't grown in containers before, try it. It's a really good tool and makes a lot of sense for anyone who grows in a more temperate zone. Then as the season goes along, remember a couple things. The plant grows quickly and you know that it will sprout little branches that we normally pinch or prune, some people do anyway, um, as the season goes along. Pinch more if you're growing at the coast. Take off that growth that comes between the, right at the base of a stem and the, main, and the main stem. Take that off, remove it. That opens up the middle of the plant to more sun and more circulation, both great things for your tomatoes as the season goes along. And perhaps the most important thing, and this starts very early in the season and starts at tomato mania, I hope for many of you, is to take the time to choose the right variety that you're gonna grow in your coastal garden. Short season tomatoes are perfect for coastal gardens. This is what you're after if you've had problems in the past, if when we get unlucky and we have a foggy or, or sort of overcast early season, these are the tomatoes that work. This is early girl. This is the one that, that lots of us know. It will ripen in less than 72 days. Now that, when compared with some of the larger tomatoes that take 110, you can tell. They're, that's an early tomato and that's the one you're going to be picking first. And for many reasons, that's why all of us grow early season or short season tomatoes. They'll grow well everywhere, but they're perfect for the coast because they will flower and they will fruit in lower temps. That's the key. You have a much more temperate situation at the coast and you need a, a tomato that's been essentially bred for that. Many tomatoes that will work come from colder regions of the world. You may have heard of the Siberians. There's a tomato called Siberia. Sometimes you can tell by the name of the, the tomato that it's okay or, or, or great for colder regions. And again, I'm gonna translate that to coastal. Uh, Mountain Spring, Oregon Spring, Glasnost, um, any, a lot of times you'll get a, you'll get a clue from the name about, uh, about what it does and how quickly it ripens in the garden. Stupice or Stupichka is a Czechoslovakian heirloom that many grow. Jean Flamme is a French heirloom that people love. All of these are a little bit smaller. They generally grow in clusters, but they'll be the first things that you can pick in the garden and they'll be wonderful, wonderful additions to the entire season. Most of them are smaller. So again, they're not always the big beefsteak that we dream of in the summer, but uh, you can grow lots of smaller tomatoes and trade with friends who have beefsteaks down the block or in another section of, of your neighborhood where they can actually grow the larger tomatoes. Thanks so much and we'll see you at Tomato Mania.